Welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing dual vector spaces. Okay, so just before we go any further, there's one piece of terminology that I'd just like to give you, okay, and that's the terminology uh, for the elements of the dual vector space. So the elements of a dual vector space are known as covectors. Okay, so we know that the elements of a vector space are called vectors. The elements of the dual vector space for this vector space are known as the covectors. Okay, so that's just a piece of terminology that I might uh, use um, in upcoming uh, moments. But it is common. Um, it is common terminology. Okay, so in linear maps or covectors, whatever you want to call the elements of the dual vector space, uh, that's just an additional piece of terminology. Okay, so back to the important stuff, proving that this dual vector space is actually uh, a vector space. So we've defined how we're going to add uh, two uh, covectors, two linear maps together in the dual vector space, and we've seen that it does obey closure, so when we add them in this way we do end up with another map that is a linear map that is back within the dual vector space. Okay, now let's move on to the other axioms that addition must obey, and I think this one is the longest one to actually prove, so the others will be easier. Okay, so axiom number two next. So associativity is axiom number two. Addition must obey associativity, which means that if we want to consider the addition of three things, so let's say we want to consider the addition of phi 1 with phi 2 with phi 3, then it should not matter uh, where we put the brackets. Okay, so we can either put the brackets around phi 1 plus phi 2, or we can put the brackets around phi 2 plus phi 3, and these two things must be the same. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to put of v, because after all this is a function. Okay, so we want this function here to be absolutely the same as if we do it the other way. So if we put the brackets around uh, phi 2 plus phi 3 here, okay, and then finally take that answer, which is another linear map, and then ask um, what does this map v onto. Okay, now all of these additions here are obviously just the addition in the dual vector space here that we've just defined. Okay, so we want to prove that this statement is true, that it really does not matter which, uh, well, where you put the brackets, which way you do it, okay? Addition uh, on this dual vector space needs to obey associativity, needs to be associative. Okay, so how am I going to prove this? Well, all I'm going to do is I'm going to do it both ways and show that uh, what I get is the same. Okay, so let's consider then what this actually is going to map V onto. Okay, well, let's just apply the definition. Okay, so back up here, phi 1 plus phi 2 of V is just equal to phi 1 of V plus phi 2 of V, where they're added together in the field there. Okay, so consider phi 1 plus phi 2 as just being some uh, covector within the dual vector space. Then we can consider, and I'll just get my pens here, we're going to not vivid purple, I'll use yellow. Uh, so we're going to consider this as one thing in the dual vector space for now. So I've got this thing added to this thing, and I'm going to firstly split those up. Okay, so hopefully you'll agree what I can do is I can split this up into phi 1 plus phi 2 of v plus phi 3 of v, like so, just applying the definition. Okay, so this now is addition in the field. Okay, and this still is addition in the dual vector space, so I'll cover that in, in turquoise here. So I've just viewed this as being one element of the dual vector space added to another element and then applied the definition here to split it up like this. Now what I can do is apply the definition again to phi 1 plus phi 2 of v here to get phi 1 of v plus phi 2 of v. Okay, and then we'll have brackets around that plus phi 3 of v, like so. And now all of these additions that we've got here, so this addition here and this addition here, these are additions in the field, capital F. Okay, now you can probably see where this is going to go, how this proof is going to end, because we know that addition in the field obeys associativity, so it really does not matter that the brackets are around phi 1 of v 
plus phi 2 of v. Uh, we could equally well put them around phi 2 of v plus phi 3 of v, and indeed if we do it the other way, we'll just get that. Okay, so let me now show you this. So again, uh, I'll repeat this argument. What we're going to do this time is consider phi 2 plus phi 3 as just being one covector in the dual vector space. And now we're going to apply the definition here. Uh, so we'll get that this is phi 1 of v plus phi 2 plus phi 3 of v, like so. So let me just once again colour in the additions. So this is addition in the field in purple here, and this is addition in the dual vector space in turquoise there. Then what we can do is once again apply the definition here, and what we'll overall end up with is phi 1 of v plus, and then in brackets, phi 2 of v plus phi 3 of v, like so, where all of those additions are done in the field, so I'll colour them all in in vivid purple here. Okay, and of course these two things are utterly equal to one another because addition in the field, which all of these purple addition signs are, uh, is associative, and therefore it really does not matter if I put the brackets like this or the brackets like this. So indeed, I have now proven that addition in my dual vector space defined in the way that I have done here uh, does obey associativity. So this is going well. So we've now uh, done uh, closure, we've done associativity. Let's now do an additive identity. So we want the existence of an additive identity. So I'll just bring this up here. So number three, uh, we want an identity. So what is our additive identity going to actually be? Well, this is going to be the map that maps all the vectors in the original vector space, capital V, onto zero. Okay, so I will call this the zero map, okay, and it is going to be a linear map. So it will map all the elements of the vector space, capital V, uh, onto elements in the field, but it's a very trivial map because it's going to map all the elements of the vector space, in fact, let that be a little v, it's going to map little v specifically onto the zero elements in the field. Now understand this, this zero here is what's going to be my zero element in my dual vector space. Okay, whereas this zero here, this is zero in the field, capital F. Okay, uh, so this zero in the dual vector space is going to map all vectors in my original vector space, capital red here, onto um, the zero element, the additive identity element in the field, capital F. Now, I claim then that this map, which is a linear map, you can check that it's a linear map, it does trivially obey both of those criteria, uh, this is actually going to be my additive identity in my dual vector space, because if I consider what phi1 plus this zero vector in the dual vector space is going to equal, okay, then just by definition, uh, this is going to map any vector in the vector space onto phi 1 of v plus 0 of v, like so, okay, where this is addition in the field. Now, of course, what we know is that 0 of v for all v is equal to 0 in the field, and then when I add 0 in the field onto this element of the field, it will just give me phi 1 of v back again. Okay, so this will map all vectors onto the identical thing uh, to what phi 1 would map them onto. So indeed, phi 1 plus uh, this 0 map is indeed phi 1 once again, okay, in the dual vector space. And hopefully you can appreciate that if I did the other way around, if I did the 0 map plus phi 1, okay, where again, this is addition in the dual vector space, that would also equal phi 1 back again. Okay, so this truly is the additive identity in my dual vector space, this zero map that maps all the elements of our original vector space, capital V, onto the additive identity in the field, the zero element in the field. Okay, so that's my additive identity, so we can tick that one off.